right, now let's move on to drawing a interior in two-point perspective. We're still going to begin by uh, trying to look for where our horizon line is and um, set up our picture plane. Uh, for this two-point, a lot of times um, the images that we're looking at, the uh, vanishing points would be outside of a picture plane. And um, so where you place your picture plane in relation to your page and your horizon line uh, is really important. So just by looking at this image, we know this show just somewhere around the center, but I think a really good indicator to find your horizon line on an image is just to look for areas where the top planes of these rectangular shapes start to flatten and almost disappear. So uh, I can see that just near the couch that's um, further away near the window area, those top planes start to flatten and become very compressed. I'm going to roughly put it around this sort of halfway point, maybe just a little higher. I'm going to measure a quarter inch from uh, each side of my horizon line and set up my two vanishing points on both sides. And now that I have my vanishing point, I can start drawing a series of guides radiating from my vanishing point. Uh, so now just looking at the image, I know all of the right facing planes, the edges are converging a lot faster than the left facing plane. So I know that my picture plane will be a little closer to the right side of my page and my right vanishing point. So in the beginning, and uh, you don't have to draw too many guys when uh, you're at this stage, so here I'm probably just making them maybe an inch apart or a little less. Now I just have uh, these really light guidelines. So I'm going to just look for edges that would uh, match up my guides to uh, really find uh, how we're to place my picture plane. Uh, so uh, here, I'm looking at this line over here and comparing it to this bottom edge of the glass box that I'm looking at. And I'm also looking for these angles and just to see where the vanishing point is in relation to all of the objects that are inside. So I'm going to look for these bigger edges. Another one would be the rug. So actually, now that I'm using the angle resulted from the second vanishing point, I can figure out where everything is, um, how far that vanishing point come out from the picture plane. So I can see actually my left vanishing point is actually inside the picture plane. It's very close to the edge, uh, but you can just look at where all the diagonals are converging. I can do um, a little bit of siding and um, um, use a pencil or a ruler as a straight edge to figure out where all of these diagonals are converging. So I can see the left vanishing point is inside the picture plane. I found that vanishing point by looking at the angle of this uh, bench versus the angle of this bigger carpet, how they're converging. At this stage, you can make your guys a little more compact so it's easier for you to use them as references of all your angles. So I'm going to start by trying to get a estimate of the placement of some of these bigger objects. I'm going to start with this corner wall over here. It's made of glass. So now I have some of these bigger walls 
establish. I also want to look at these bigger architecture pieces. So the bed would be one of them. So right now we're still kind of dealing with a lot of it. It's kind of a inverted box. It's good to simplify these more complex shapes to a big box to begin with. So what I'm going to do is, even though I can still leave a little space for the headboard for the bed, I'm really looking at that platform that the bed is on and um, simplify this into a rectangular box. And we can now move um, a little further down to this living area where we have another rug with um, a sectional on it. And again, for the couch, I'm not gonna add in the backrest just yet. I'm just looking at this sort of top plane of the Ottoman and making that the height of a couch. And then I can start sectioning it slowly. After blocking in the basic shape of the couch, I'm gonna move on to the stairs. It doesn't perfectly conform to the rectangular shape that we're doing. And instead of looking at the stairs as a whole as this sort of wedge shape, and you can uh, start by blocking the angle of a staircase in, but by the end of the day, it's still um, basically a lot of rectangles stacked together. So to get the individual steps correct, you're also just looking at them as uh, basically this tower of rectangle and um, using the two vanishing points on both sides to find each edge of the step. Um, away from the stairs would be this window area. And all I'm going to do at this point is just section out the individual windows. All right, so now that we have all of these general shapes blocked in, uh, we can get into um, the more specific details and uh, breaking these uh, bigger blocks into the smaller subforms. Uh, so let's um, um, start with the right side, which is a little closer to us, so it's um, easier to see some of the details. Let's start with the bed. So at the moment, I just have the platform that the bed is sitting on and um, so um, I want to section that out and add a headboard. You can see the uh, in the reference photo, the top plane of the headboard becomes very compressed. So you can barely see that plane. Okay, we have some pillows in the way, but really without seeing the other end, uh, we still have a general idea of how it goes just by doing a construction of the box. So there's an, also a, another group of stairs next to this accent wall. And we have this um, plant, kind of blocks it. We can just extend the steps um, if we don't want to spend time drawing an organic object on the side. Now that we have the stairs blocked in, we can look at this big accent wall that's behind the bed. So it's actually divided into these two sections. One is this glass case and a white wall that serves as a base. So we started off by grouping them together and now we can divide them into sections again. So before when the um, the forms are stacked together, the vertical edges are not exactly, a, they're, they're perfectly aligned and now they're 
I'm splitting them apart a little bit more just to show that relationship. And once I'm mostly done with one area, I can start to clean up some of the guides so my lines are not getting too confusing because there are a lot of things going on in this interior and um, so you want to have a clean drawing. So right here we have a another accent wall with um, the sort of uh, rock formation going on. So we can block that in so uh, it will leave some negative space between the glass case and the stairs. And can just eyeball how much of this rock that we're seeing. So, so this time I'm going to actually try to build up the staircase by stacking the rectangular shapes. There's this kind of little skylight on the top of, of this wall right here. And um, so we're moving on from the staircase area to the windows. So I'm still going to start by giving the top plane. of this bigger box a little more definition. And um, it's a little hard to read the angle when you're so far away from the other vanishing point and I'm going to use a bigger ruler for that. And um, giving my armrest a top and a side plane. So for some of these smaller plane changes, you don't really have to measure out every angle on a very tiny plane. I think a lot, a lot of time you can eyeball that because the perspective doesn't change that much when the distance is that small. So at this stage, if I'm confident about the perspective of a object, uh, say this Ottoman, I can start uh, rounding out the corners and adding in these accents. And we have this fireplace or stove that's in front of it. And again, it's kind of in a irregular shape. It gets a little tricky, so um, I'm going to do what I can find an angle first, so which is these windows. So I'm slowly erasing my guides, and I'm going to put in my window frames. And I have this bench off to the side that's really close to my left vanishing point. It has this tiny side plane that we can see a little bit of. So now I have everything that's on the floor and the walls. Mostly there, I can um, also look at some of these um, smaller objects on the ceiling. So namely, I would say I think uh, it's a light and maybe uh, it's I don't really know if those are smoke detectors, or, but these elliptical shapes. All of these are aligned together, and I do want to start by putting them into these two-point rectangular planes. And but the idea is basically, especially when um, you have these ellipses aligned um, in the roll, it's a little better than simply eyeballing them. And lastly, I want to go back and start really accenting the lines. And so for edges that are hitting the floor, I want to give them a little more weight. And also want to 
really try to accent my corner edges. And so for some of these edges in the back, I'm really going to make them a little lighter to show that they're further away from us. Now, I wouldn't worry too much if there's still a ghost of your guide lines or any sort of construction lines. Because after all, we also want to see the process of how you get to that stage. And I'm going to lastly restate the picture plane a little bit. I was getting a little lost comparing to the other lines. But the key to doing a two-point drawing, whether you're looking at a photo reference and, or you're drawing from life, is always to keep your vertical straight and parallel and make sure that all the left-facing planes are converging to the vanishing point on the left side and all your right-facing planes are converging to the vanishing point on the right side. And if you are working from life, uh, just make sure to stay truthful to your vanishing points. Even though you might see a different angle um, as you're looking at objects that are off to the side. And um, so go from general to specific and go from the bigger shapes to smaller shape, really try to simplify your objects in the beginning, no matter how complex they might seem to be. And yeah, um, there you have it. There is a lot of value in online art education. We have so much great instruction on NMA that is so easily accessible. Even when I was in school learning to draw and paint, nothing was online. Wherever you are in the world, you can get this instruction. And not only can you watch these lessons that are so valuable and so in-depth and so passionately instructed, but you can watch them again and again and again. 